As promised, I am re-uploading this video now that I've got it to work. Anyway, this is the pump I started with. It is a centrifugal pump. It does not have any pressure, just flow. And it does not have enough pressure to push fluid through the torch head at a rate fast enough to turn off the alarm. So I had to go with a stronger pump. I went with a diaphragm type pump. These pumps are used for sprayers and motorhome type water setups, stuff like that. The durability on it should be fine. Uh, link in the description or link up here to a little bit of a video on what I found out about this pump in the process of installing it. Anyway, uh, a couple of changes that I made from the original design. I added a filter. This is just a filter I've had. I'll try to find what filter it was. Link in the video description. And I've added a accumulator. This is just a water bottle with a large based valve stem in it. This valve stem is large enough to where it almost touches the side of the bottle or it does touch the side of the bottle when it goes in. I tried using a smaller based valve stem and uh, it leaked. But anyway, once you get the hole the right size, get this pulled into place. I used a little air pressure to help seat it. It works great, doesn't leak at all. Anyway, the reason for the accumulator is this pump on its lowest setting, which it's a 35 PSI pump to, I have no idea how high it'll go, but on its lowest setting, it pulses from 25 to 35 PSI. I had a gauge on it at one time, but it pulses very rapidly. And there we go, it moves enough water. But hear how that pump's stuttering? unless you turn the pressure way up and then you can hear the pump straining and there's no need to put that much pressure through the line. So with the accumulator, it keeps the surging of the pump a little bit lower. So the idea is this has to be airtight and this is just a way for those pressure pulses to bounce. So let's see what happens. Nope, still does it. The bigger this accumulator bottle is, the less often the pump would cycle off and on. But it does work, let's give it a test. And you can see the water going into the accumulator bottle. And there you go. Now the pump will cut off. That's the only thing I don't like about using this style of pump is that the pressure, it has to cycle. You know what, let's turn that thing off. I'm gonna do updates on the life of this pump. Um, I don't do very much welding with TIG, so I'm going to actually probably run this thing off and on whenever I think about it just to see how it works. Uh, longevity in a shop where you do a lot of welding, nobody who does a lot of welding would be wasting their time building something like this. They want something that's got a warranty and that'll work and right out of the box and they're not gonna waste a day and a half, two days trying to build the thing. Anyway, I think that's all the uh, rambling I'm gonna do for now. Uh, like I said, links to everything in the video description and now we're gonna get on with the original video of how I built this thing and what my plan was. And like I said, the only difference that's not in the original setup of this is I've added a filter and it has a pressure reservoir in it. So other than that, all the wiring, everything else is exactly the same as it was in the original setup. It just actually turns the alarm off which I like. Oh, one other thing. I'm gonna pull the circuit breaker or the fuse out for the pump. It's running off the water in the accumulator right now or the coolant.
Well, if you're going to weld a lot of aluminum, which I did the other day, you're going to find out that you're going to need a water-cooled TIG torch. And they're not too bad. I mean, I bought torch hoses and everything for $189, I think, $190 off of uh, Everlast website. But once you get that, you're going to find out that you need a cooler. And coolers are rather expensive, and they're rather simple machines. I mean, you can throw a pump in a bucket and pump water through the TIG torch, and... It works. There's videos out there on YouTube that show that. But I decided I wanted to run actual coolant fluid. Um, I'm going to link this in the description below along with all the other stuff that I put in here and a total of the, what it costs me. I'll also put that somewhere down here. But it works. It pumps water through this little hose, which is all it has to do. The features of this one are the fact that it does have an alarm. You'll hear the alarm as soon as I fire it up, but as soon as the water starts moving, the alarm goes away. It also has a green light to tell you that the power is actually on. And the alarm, as soon as the pump stops turning, the alarm goes off. If it blows a fuse to the pump, the alarm goes off. If it blows a fuse to the pump and the fan, the alarm still goes off. As long as the power supply is working the way I have this wired, that alarm will go off. Uh, let's shut that alarm off. So everything came, that came off eBay or Amazon, links in the description below. Uh, the fans, power supply, they all were parts that I had or came out of this computer or came out of another computer. The cooler, chiller, radiator is a trans cooler. Make sure you clean those out real good because uh, I had to clean the whole system out because I didn't clean it out good enough. It's a trans cooler off of, I think, like a 2004 or 5 Chevy truck. But any of them will work, and all of it is 3 8 hose. You have to stretch the hose a little bit to get it over the top of this one. And all the... Uh, bay doors, card slot doors were removed so you can see the fluid level in the tank inside. Everything works and what follows is a video of how I put this whole thing together. I'm going to start with the simple stuff. I'm going to repurpose these cooling fans out of the computer and to do that I'm going to have to take the screens off this side because this is the intake side and I want the intake side against there. Take the screen off here Put the screen on there or the grill whatever you want to call it these come out real easy pop these little pins out that'll come off all four of those will come out and i'm also going to pull these rubber tabs out of here that it was originally mounted on and i will cut those off flat with a sharper knife maybe next time. Once I cut those off flat, I'll stick those in there at the corners of the fan and then they can set against the radiator and I just put a couple tie wraps around it to hold it to the radiator. Keeping it simple while I can keep it simple, where I can keep it simple and when I can keep it simple. And now it's gotta go up and be installed in here somewhere. Like my plan is something, yeah, I, some way, it's going to go in here. My plan is something like that. And then this trans line that I took off the same truck, I'm going to steal the ends off of it, pop those into there, and then they'll just hose clamp to my plastic tubing. So I'll make a couple brackets to mount this to, and then we'll move on. Presto, cut it off. And then what I'll do is I'll take the cutter and I'll just run around it a little bit put some little grooves in there so when I clamp the hose on it'll have a little bit of something to hang on to. System's not going to be under any kind of pressure at all. I just like the added security of knowing that it's just not going to fall off on its own. Just a little score on there and another little score on there. And snap that back in place. So it used to hold transmission line pressure so it should hold this little bit of fluid pressure, I hope. If it leaks, I'll have to figure out why. 
And I even got the safety clip because you never know when vibration or something might cause that clip to fall out. And because I'm using 3 8 ID hose, it won't fit over that very easily without heating it and stretching it. I'm going to take a knife and cut this down a little so it's a little bit closer to the size that I need because it's way over half inch actually. So just thought I'd throw that in there. So if anybody tried to do this, they'd say, hey, how did you get that to fit? Don't judge my whittling. And now it fits. Probably sand a little bit, smooth it out, but you can always use sealant if it doesn't seal, right? Broken belts from the belt sander. Thousands of uses. Ooh, perfect. I'm going to show this, but nobody in their right mind would use a computer case for this because it would be easier just to make your own metal box and not have to go through all this. But I just bent this out a little bit so it will catch this little tab right here. Drop that little tab into there. It'll hold the water tank from flopping around too much. And then once it's all together, a couple of self-tapping sheet metal screws in there. And I've got the water tank mounted. So we're going to need a panel on the front here to put uh, various switches and uh, our water fittings and stuff like that. So I have this scrap of diamond plate left over from a previous project, well taken off of a previous project and replaced actually, but uh, just a tiny bit small. So uh, I guess we're going to round the corners off, never throw anything away. Well, moving right along, I've got my coolant tank and my radiator mounted. I've made some brackets out of some scrap pieces of aluminum angle. I've got the water tank slid into a tab that I made on this secondary panel inside of here and just two self-tapping screws holding it in the top. I've started to route some of my water lines where they're going to be. Figured out my flow sensor is going to go here. Hopefully that works. Wobble, 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 wobble. Starting with an almost perfect size hole saw, you end up after the wobble wobbles with a slightly oversized hole. Works. And presto, we have a panel where there used to be disk drives and DVD drives and stuff like that. We have a control panel and water inlet and outlet. The reason this has a second hole right here is because, uh, I don't know, I ordered another light like this, another, it's green, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to use it for, if I'll just use it for a power on indicator or might be needed for something else once I get this thing put together and think of something. So easier to put an extra hole in it now than later. All right, well, if it looks like a mess at this point, that's because it is a mess. I've just got it temporarily wired up so that I can test the function of everything, which I've checked and it does work. Switch on. This is just the contactor to turn on the power supply that was in the computer. So the switch doesn't go to anything except the power supply. Everything is shut off when the switch is off. Switch on, turns the power supply on, fans come on, water pump is running. Pass that part of the test. I still got a few things that are coming in to finish it. So once they get here, I'll be able to wire the last of my relays. Should be able to do that within the next 24 hours, I hope. The uh, hoses on the inside. This tubing was some, what is this, 3 8 tubing? That was left over from another project. So luckily, everything in here, this tubing will fit, except for the little fittings at the front. They are quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is I've got this little piece of vacuum line, and that slides over that fitting, and then the hose will slide over the top of that. Let me get you up here real close where you can see what I mean. Let's see if the camera can see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Camera can see that. Yep. So this little piece of hose just slides over this. Little hose clamp action, wherever the hose clamps are. Got my little box of hose clamps right here. Woohoo. Uh, find the right clamp. And we just got all this room to work with here slip that on there slip that over there 
And I'm not sure if that's up to code or not, but I think it'll hold the amount of pressure we're going to be running here, which should be practically nothing. All right, then, before you do something like this, you have to ask yourself, do I feel lucky? Because if you look closely, you'll see wires twisted together and hanging all over the place. Nothing's completely finished. I'm going to pour some distilled water in this bad boy, get a Enough in there to where I, whoops, just poured it over the back side. Awesome. Now I won't be able to tell if there's any leaks. Okay, let me clean up that mess and I'll be right back. That was not very smart. Yeah, it's probably not going to be enough. Would have been enough if I hadn't poured it all over the place. I do have some coolant that's actually made for a TIG torch cooling system, but I'm not going to put that in there just yet in case it just blows a line off or something. All right. I've, uh, Got a jumper hose right here, plugged in to the fittings, and we'll move up here where we can see water flowing through the lines, possibly when I turn this thing on, or sparks flying, or circuit breakers popping, or whatever happens. And here we go. Switch on. There's flow. After leaving that cap off about 14 dozen oh. times and flooding the place with coolant, I uh, finally decided to put a fitting in the side of the reservoir. Uh, you probably noticed that earlier in the video. All right, wiring diagram. This is a oversimplified wiring diagram or overcomplicated, depending on what you know about electrical diagrams. Anyway... I decided I'm not going to use relays for the fan and the pump because I can use a switch which controls a 3 volt circuit on the power supply that turns off and on the power supply so I can control the power by turning the power supply completely off. So with no relays that makes that that much simpler. But I have to use a relay for the flow meter because the flow meter makes contact when water is flowing through it. So that would turn the alarm on when water's flowing through it. I want it to turn the alarm off when that stops. So to do that, you need a five post relay. And on a five post relay, you have an 87A terminal. The relay wires normally like a four post relay, but 87A will then shut off as soon as power is applied through this leg and this leg. Once that circuit's complete, the magnet comes on, the switch flips over, 87A is not powered anymore, 87 is powered. So that's how you get a switch that switches on to switch off your alarm through the five post relay. I don't know if I explained that very well. Uh, you can pause this to look at the wiring diagram. I believe I have it correct finally. So that is your official, unofficial pencil wiring diagram. As you can see, there were a lot of changes. You can see all the eraser work, and hey, it works. And I believe this is the way I have it wired, I think. No, this is the way it's wired. Well, um, some mistakes were probably made. I didn't really clean out the trans cooler enough and uh, got a little oily substance in there, so... Uh, I'm going to clean this all out with a little soap and water and then rinse it thoroughly and drain it all out and start over. All right, so what we have here is more stuff. This is all Amazon stuff. Uh, we have switches with no light because it's a three volt circuit that I'm switching and it wouldn't power the light anyway. So uh, I needed one and I bought five because I can put those in the spare parts box and have spares for next job. And this I'm actually going to use. This is the fuse block I've got some five post relays now that are fused and uh, those will go in the electrical spare parts and since I needed a green light to go with my red light that'll just tell me power's on I bought green lights that have alarms in them and I disabled the alarm by cutting it in half I'll show you a picture of that I'll do better than a picture I'll show you a video of it so I just cut it off with a hot knife and uh, there's a little metal disc in here. I took the metal disc out so that this green light will be on all the time and flashing when the power is on to let me know that power is actually on. And I won't have to listen to that little horn. Hey, that's one way to get a matching green light. 
All right, now we get on to wiring it up and we can take this high quality electrical tape off since we don't have to worry about sparks anymore because I've got the power off. Temporary electrical tape. So do I mount this? Eh, it sticks out too far for the cover to clear there. Mount it all the way back here, that would work. Or I can do it the difficult way because I do a lot of things a difficult way. Um, maybe make an angle bracket and mount it right there. Or maybe make a bracket and put it right here so it's easily accessible. I mean, if you're making brackets, you might as well make a bracket so it sets right there where you can look at them without even taking the side panel off. All right, now, don't that look professional? Okay, maybe we should make it out of metal. And just a couple seconds later, through the magic of video editing, we have a painted steel part with rubber grommets to run our wires through. All right, we have all the wiring soldered, all the connectors connected and terminated where they terminate. We got fuses in the fuse block. Drop in a couple of little self tappers on this part of it, and we should be ready to show you how it operates. All right, there we go. That's what it looks like, finished product. Let's come around to the front, flip the switch. I put some of the fluid in it that belongs in it. It's only folded right there, but it's working. And the coolant flow. Start at the reservoir, from the reservoir, through the pump, tease into the accumulator, through a filter. Filter is not really required, but I added one. Out to the torch head, back from the torch head, through the radiator, through the flow switch, and then back to the reservoir. Well, that about sums it up. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see what happens the first time I use this thing. Check out the video description because all the pertinent information of the parts and pieces and what happens when I use this thing and if it ever blows up or how long it lasts will always be added in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Uh, someday I might tidy up in there a little bit, you know, mount the pump so it's not bouncing around in there. But for right now, we're just going to put a lid on it. There we go. And if I do this the right way, I may be able to get it hung on the side of here without breaking any hoses off. Could have disconnected them, but that's too easy. Woohoo! And the bracket's strong enough to hold it up. Well, that about sums it up. Swapping it over to the diaphragm style pump seems to have worked out rather well. I tried to make a somewhat coherent video out of this, even though some of my footage had the other pump in it. As I said at the beginning of the video, uh, the best way to build one of these if you want the alarm and all that stuff is to probably just go ahead and buy one. But I have to say I found this to be challenging. It was quite interesting to do. And I have a TIG torch cooler that I believe is going to do the job. At least for me. Like I said, I don't use it a lot. You can throw this on the end of the video. This pump will probably work and might have enough flow through the whole system to turn the alarm off. Uh... If this pump fails, I'm going to try this style of pump. The biggest problem people seem to have with this style of pump is that they corrode from the type of coolant they use. And I don't know if the kind of coolant that I used, link in the description, would cause the pump to corrode or not. I guess the only way I would know that is if I put this on like a little test reservoir and just let it sit there underneath the reservoir and circulate water every now and then and see if it lasts six, eight months, a year, or whatever. Might do a test on this. Might actually go completely crazy and change that pump out to this pump one day and try it. If I do that, there'll be another video showing how all that works, if it does or doesn't. But anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and uh, check out some of my other videos.